Have you ever heard of the phrase spooky action at a distance? Yeah, it sounds kind of like something out of like a science fiction movie or something. Well, it is from science fiction in a way. Yeah. Um, it was actually Albert Einstein himself who coined that phrase. Oh, wow. Really? To describe one of the most bizarre and mind boggling phenomena in quantum physics, and that is quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement. Yeah. It's one of those concepts that even when you kind of think you understand it, it still feels like, how is that even possible? It's right. like it just bends your brain a little bit. Yeah. And that's what we're diving into today. We're going to try to unpack this mysterious, even spooky connection that can exist between particles. So should we start with the basics? Like, what exactly is quantum entanglement? Absolutely. Let's get into that. Mm -hmm. um, and for today's deep dive, we're going to be looking at some really fascinating new research that's come out of Osaka Metropolitan University in Japan. Oh, cool. What are they looking at? Yeah, so they're shedding light on entanglement, not like across galaxies, but in the tiny, tiny world of nanoscale materials. Okay, so like the building blocks of, well, everything really, but getting down to that super small scale. Exactly. And we've got their research straight from the university itself and also a really detailed paper that they published in the journal Physical Review B. Nice. Sounds like some good sources. Yeah. And the goal is to understand why their new formulas for understanding entanglement at this nanoscale, why they're so important, what it could mean for technology going forward. So we're talking about practical applications as well. That's right. That's right. So let's tackle this head on. You know, what is quantum entanglement to begin with? Well, it's kind of like this. Um, imagine you have two coins, right? And they're linked together in some some fundamental way. OK. You flip one coin here and instantly, without even looking, you know what the other coin did miles away. That's a pretty wild concept. It is. It's like they're connected by some invisible thread. But it's even weirder than that, because in the quantum world, it's not just about heads or tails. Okay. It's like the coins are both heads and tails at the same time until you look at one of them. And then suddenly both of them decide what they are. So they're in this kind of blurry, undefined state until they're measured. Exactly. That's the idea of superposition. Particles can exist in this mix of all possibilities until you measure them, and then they choose a state. And with entangled particles, this choice is shared instantly, even if they're light years apart. So it's like the act of measuring one instantly affects the other, no matter how far apart they are. That's right. It's as if the distance between them doesn't even matter which is what made Einstein so uneasy about it. It seemed to violate his ideas about the speed of light being the ultimate speed limit in the universe. And this isn't just like a theoretical curiosity, right? This entanglement idea has real implications. Huge implications. I mean, this is the foundation for things like quantum computers, yeah. which could be exponentially more powerful than our current computers. And it's also key for quantum cryptography, which is all about creating super secure communication channels. OK, so entanglement, it's powerful, it's weird. Mm -hmm. It's got these potential real world applications. But now this new research we're looking at, they're focusing on the local in nanoscale systems. Mm. So what does that actually mean? What are they looking at specifically? Yeah, so traditionally when we study entanglement, we tend to look at, you know, the big picture. Like if you're talking about a magnet, it's the overall magnetic properties. Or if you're talking about superconductivity, it's about how the material behaves as a whole. But these researchers, they zoomed in. Right. They said, let's look at the entanglement between one or two chosen atoms within a material and their immediate neighbors, the stuff right around them. So instead of looking at the whole forest, they're looking at a single tree and like the immediate ecosystem around it. Precisely. And they're doing this in what we call strongly correlated electron systems. Oh, yeah, that's a mouthful. What are those? Yeah. So these are materials where the electrons, those tiny charged particles, are interacting with each other really, really strongly. Right. And it's those interactions that largely determine how the whole material behaves. But because these interactions are so strong, the quantum states, the way these electrons are arranged and behaving gets incredibly complex. Right. It's like trying to understand the choreography of a dance where everyone's constantly bumping into and influencing each other. Okay, so it's a very crowded dance floor. Exactly. And this makes them really, really interesting places to study entanglement because it's happening in this very intricate and dynamic environment. So they focused on this local entanglement in these very complex systems. What did they actually find? What was the outcome of this research? Well, they were able to derive formulas, essentially mathematical equations, for calculating some pretty fundamental quantum properties. Mm -hmm. And one of the key ones is what we call entanglement entropy. Entropy, okay. 
And you can think of this as like a measure of how deeply connected or intertwined the quantum state of, say, one atom is with the rest of the system. So how entangled that one atom is with yeah. everything else going on around it. That's right. And they also came up with formulas for mutual information, which tells us how much information is shared between different parts of the quantum system and relative entropy, which helps us quantify the difference between two different quantum states. But the really cool thing is what they called a pleasant surprise was that the formula they found for entanglement entropy was surprisingly simple. Wait, so a simple formula for something as bizarre as entanglement. Yeah, I know. It suggests that even within these really complex systems, there might be some underlying elegant relationships governing entanglement. That's pretty profound. Can you give us a sense of what this formula looks like without, like, you know, getting too deep in the weeds mathematically? Sure. So it looks like this, and I'll try to go slow. S N in E H E L A N A A L A A A G N O A H A A A A A A A G A A H A A A G N E A T A A A A H. Okay, so letters and numbers and symbols. I'm not sure I'm getting it visually just yet. Right. Well, it might look intimidating, but what it's basically saying is that the entanglement entropy. Remember. That's our measure of how entangled a chosen atom is with its surroundings. It's directly related to the number of its upspin and downspin electrons. Okay. Spin, like you think of an electron as a tiny spinning top. Exactly. And also the number of upspin and downspin holes. And holes are kind of like the absence of electrons, like a missing spot where an electron should be. Okay, so it's looking at the very specific makeup of that single atom. That's it. And the beauty of it isn't just that the formula itself is relatively simple, but that such a straightforward relationship can unlock the secrets of entanglement in these systems. It suggests that maybe the fundamental principles at play here are more accessible than we thought. I like that. It's like finding a simple recipe for a very, very complex dish. So. They have these formulas, but how do they know they actually work? How do they test them out? Right. Well, they put these formulas to the test using real nanoscale materials. They looked at nanoscale artificial magnetic materials, which are basically like tiny, tiny magnets arranged in a line, like beads on a string. Okay. And they also looked at dilute magnetic alloys, which is where you have individual magnetic atoms kind of scattered within a non-magnetic material. So two very different types of materials but both at that nanoscale level. Exactly. And so what happened when they applied the formulas to these real materials? Did it all line up perfectly or were there any surprises? Well, there were definitely some surprises, which is, you know, often the case in science, especially when you're dealing with the quantum world. So in those nanoscale artificial magnetic materials, they saw these counterintuitive patterns of entanglement. Counterintuitive, meaning? Meaning that the way the entanglement behaved at this super small scale didn't quite match what we'd expect based on our understanding of how it works at larger scales. That's like the rules are different down there in the quantum realm? In a way, yeah. It really highlights how quantum mechanics can lead to behaviors that just don't make sense from our everyday experience. And then in the dilute magnetic alloys, they found that their formula for quantum relative entropy, remember that's the one that measures the difference between quantum states, was really crucial for understanding the Kondo effect. The Kondo effect. Now that sounds like something worth diving into a little bit. What is that? Yeah, it's another one of those fascinating quantum phenomena so imagine you have a magnetic impurity, like a single magnetic atom sitting inside a non-magnetic metal. Okay. Now at very low temperature, something really strange happens. The conduction electrons in the metal, those are the electrons that are free to move around, they sort of gather around this magnetic impurity and effectively screen its magnetic moment, making it disappear. So it's like they're canceling out its magnetism. Exactly. And this has huge implications for the electrical and magnetic properties of the material. And what these researchers found was that their formula for quantum relative entropy was like this key that helped them understand this intricate dance between the magnetic impurity and the surrounding electrons at the quantum level. So a relatively simple formula helping to explain this complex interaction mm -hmm. that has these real-world consequences for how materials behave. Exactly. And, you know, understanding things like the Kondo effect is fundamental if we want to develop new electronic materials, sensors with very specific properties. It all comes back to understanding these fundamental interactions. And it's interesting because one of the lead researchers on this project, Yunori Nishikawa, he even said that these unexpected behaviors, these counterintuitive patterns, opened new avenues for understanding quantum interactions. It's almost like they stumbled onto something even bigger than they anticipated. 
Yeah, it really does suggest that by focusing on this local level of entanglement, by having these simpler mathematical tools to analyze it, we can get a much deeper understanding of how quantum mechanics works in the real world. And this isn't just about theoretical knowledge. It has the potential to lead to real advancements in quantum technologies, because now we have a more precise handle on these connections. So let's recap here, pull together what we've learned from this deep dive into the quantum realm. Okay. We've got these physicists in Japan who have developed these surprisingly simple formulas to understand local quantum entanglement in these tiny nanoscale materials. Right. And by focusing on individual atoms and their immediate surroundings in these strongly interacting systems, they're uncovering these unexpected patterns of entanglement and gaining these crucial insights into complex phenomena like the Kondo effect. Exactly. I think what's so cool about this is it highlights that by looking at the quantum world in a slightly different way, you know, focusing on the local rather than just the global, we can get a fresh perspective and develop simpler tools to understand these seemingly really complex phenomena. Right, like changing your lens, zooming in. And the fact that something as fundamental and as weird as entanglement can be described with these relatively simple equations in these contexts is just remarkable. It really makes you wonder you know, what other seemingly complex aspects of the universe might yield to these kinds of elegant explanations if we just shift our focus a little bit? That's a great question. And how could a deeper understanding of entanglement, thanks to these kinds of breakthroughs, how could that revolutionize technology in ways we can't even imagine yet? Right. It's all about pushing those boundaries. It really is. This deep dive into quantum entanglement reminds us that even the most mind-bending aspects of reality are slowly being brought into clearer focus, thanks to the work of these brilliant scientists all over the world. And if you found this exploration of the quantum realm as fascinating as we did, be sure to like and subscribe to The Deep Dive for more in-depth looks into the cutting edge of science. Yeah, and let us know in the comments what other scientific topics you'd like us to unpack next. We're always looking for new ideas. And stay tuned, because there are always more surprising discoveries out there shaping our understanding of the universe. Absolutely. The journey of discovery never ends. That's the beauty of it.